if you have your bible let's go together with me to first samuel chapter 17 and verse 49 for samuel chapter 17 and verse 49 then david put his hand in the bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the philistine in his forehead so that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth I want you to pray this prayer with me say Lord Jesus open my heart to your word Lord Jesus open my heart to your faith Lord Jesus open my heart to your spirit amen I want you to see when David gets up to face Goliath this very famous story David comes very positive he looks at Goliath and he's not afraid of him he doesn't get on his knees before him to ask God if it's his will to conquer him. He comes out just swinging with these words that I'm going to defeat him. I'm going to feed him to the birds. I mean he uses very already language on describing how this is going to go down. And then exactly just like that it happens. God does a victory through David. David was a very young man. The experienced soldiers in that army, they were very fearful and very timid and the Lord didn't use them. The Holy Spirit didn't move through them but he used David. It's very interesting because Goliath was also very positive. Goliath was very optimistic about his victory. And he was very expressive about it. He told everyone that I am going to defeat you David. You're nobody. In his language Goliath had no negativity and no defeat. Yet Goliath fell. I want to tell you first of all that faith or fourth dimension, positive thinking without the Holy Spirit will not work consistently. Positive thinking is good. Without the Holy Spirit, positive thinking cannot stand against spiritual forces. Now it's better to be a sinner and positive than to be a sinner and negative. It's better to be a Goliath and to be a person who is positive and a Goliath and on the top of that you're still negative. But the positivity in itself is not the secret and when we talk about fourth dimension I want you to understand we are not talking about living positive life for the sake of positive life. We are talking about partnership with Holy Spirit where Holy Spirit will use the faith we have which is expressed in positivity to move through our life. Can somebody say amen? We are not preaching positivity. We are preaching faith with which partners with the Holy Spirit. There is these books called self-help books which should give you a red flag right away. If you are the help, self is the help, you're not going to last very long. Positivity in itself is not the strength because positivity in itself cannot stand the test of time. Goliath was very successful for a while. But he came against this one obstacle where his positivity couldn't help him. And if you are positive and people use this in this world today, if you read books and you know they think and grow rich and the secret and other positive, you know about positive thinking, positive visualizing and putting images on your, on your dream board. All of these things they're good. There's nothing wrong with that. But as Christians we do not follow the positivity of Goliath which ends him on his funeral. We follow the positivity of David which is not positivity in itself but positivity in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit moves through the positive outlook and attitude to do miracles in our life and we don't give glory to the positivity we give glory to the Holy Spirit who uses our faith. Can somebody say amen? When first time I've heard of the principle of faith, like fourth dimension, was many years ago. Uh, it came from the G4, G4, G12 uh, movement and I remember Pastor Elijah Waters, he kind of set us down and encouraged us about faith and dreaming. And I got so pumped about setting goals and like visualizing myself and what God's going to do in my life. I even have posters printed of how many people we will have in our church, how many home groups we will have in our church and what God's going to do in my life. 
and I started to focus on the techniques and the methods of how faith works and you know you print you have an image on your phone that you look at every day you have images in your computer on your desk you know like of of people coming to Jesus and all of these things and I focus so much on the techniques and I am proud to say not one goal I set during that time came true not one I still have the posters upstairs as a reminder and I was convinced this whole thing of dreams, visions, goals, that doesn't work. But I missed the biggest point. It wasn't about the visions and dreams and goals and pictures. It was about the Holy Spirit. Fourth dimension does not work without the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit will not work without fourth dimension. Can somebody say amen? Let's put our hands together for Jesus fourth dimension works with the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit uses positive images that you have in your mind to work in your life. When we are negative, when we are full of fear, when we are full of negativity, when we are full of pessimism, when our outlook on life is always we see the negative in every single thing, we're full of worry, anxiety. Every thought that runs into our mind is defeated what we do when we are Christians when we have that state of mind we actually insult the Holy Spirit many Christians think that if I have lustful thoughts if I have thoughts about weed and drinking and adultery then God is offended but as long as I tolerate negative negativity in my mind God understands because it's natural it was also natural for Peter to look at Jesus and say Jesus don't go to the cross and Jesus looks at the natural thinking and says devil get behind me sometimes something that looks natural is actually demonic just because it's human it doesn't make it godly the bible says when Jesus walks into the house and the little girl was dead dead he wasn't offended by the how dead she was it was the fact that people surrounding that girl the bible says she was they were weeping and crying and Jesus walks like a boss and says she's not dead she's asleep and this is what it says in the Gospels and they mocked him that remember one time it really hit me like tons of bricks my negativity mocks and insults Jesus Jesus wasn't insulted by the dead girl he was insulted by whining crying people until he said if we don't get these people out I'm leaving and they got the people out and Jesus did a miracle if you want Jesus to raise dead things in your life get whining complaining crumbling out of the house because that insults him fourth dimension works with Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit works with fourth dimension amen I want you to write down the second truth is that it's not the thoughts that come but it's the thoughts that stay that matter now that I've talked a little bit about David how he was positive but he worked with Holy Spirit Goliath was positive but Goliath was cocky Goliath was positive in himself David was positive because he was in the Holy Spirit closer you get to the Holy Spirit more positive you're gonna have to be and I understand the positive Christian is an oxymoron for many people today like great depression you know depression and great how can great depression be great it's an oxymoron and that's how for many people but I believe that God is raising up in Tri-Cities new breed of Christians which will make every positive Christian who doesn't know the Holy Spirit look like a choir boy because of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us and because of the faith that we are going to have as believers can somebody say amen any positive people we have in this room today any Holy Ghost filled positive people we have in this room this morning so that's David I want us to look at the Goliath for a second the Bible says David throws a stone at the Goliath and the stone sunk in his head I want you to say sunk so it didn't just hit his head the stone stayed in his head and the Goliath fell you don't fall by the stones that hit you you fall by the stones that stay in you it's the stones that sink it's the thoughts that stay the thoughts that take root 
it's the thoughts that don't just fly over your head but they get stuck there and they and they go into the circle of of cycle of repetition and they get rehearsed back forth back forth meditation back like a rocking chair it goes up and down in our mind those thoughts are the thoughts that bring giants down the most vulnerable spot in every giant's head is his head the most vulnerable spot in your life is your mind you may say it is my finances because you know I got laid off during Christmas. You may say but my children are not doing good. You may say most vulnerable spot is actually my immune system because I get a tr I attract disease. My, my most difficult spot right now in my life is actually I have cancer or I have tumor. But listen your most vulnerable spot as a Christian is your mind. When your mind gets attacked you can be like a Goliath huge big tall armored protected have an armor bearer but if your head gets sunk with a stone you fall. Ask Judas when the devil threw a stone in Judas's head in John chapter 13 and the Bible says Satan placed a thought in Judas's heart and it stayed there. It brought a disciple of Jesus down and he killed him. Ask Ananias and he will tell you Satan threw a stone in Ananias head and the stone stayed in his head and he destroyed Ananias and his wife Sapphira and all of their belongings. It's like one author said it's not the birds that fly over your head that, that, that are the problem. It's the birds that build a nest in your hair and you cannot stop all the thoughts from running around in your head they will come and they will go and that's not our goal our goal is to protect our mind from thoughts sinking taking root becoming a part of us the stones we all get hit with stones and we can still stand but when the stone sinks you fall when the thought stays you get defeated when the thing remains you get attacked and maybe somebody here is sitting and you say well I cannot control the thoughts that come into my head a hundred percent I agree with you but you can control the thoughts that stay you can control the thoughts that stay in your head that's your responsibility you cannot stop everything that comes into your mind you stop what stays in your mind people say I cannot control that you know what even stays in my mind that's not true because if you couldn't control what stays in your mind God would never ask you to think on these things. Many people think like their mind is this driver and their life is just follows you know their mind thinks on their own. The Bible says think on these things this I do the thinking not thinking doing me. I control my thinking my thinking is not controlling me. The Bible says as a man thinks so is he. As you think not as the thinking do you. I know it's not proper English but you get the point. You do the thinking not the thinking doing you. You cannot give up your hands and says I am giving up in front of my mind. Your mind is not your master. Your mind is a servant. Can somebody say amen. Our mind, our mind has to be oriented the the default the worst part about our mind is not the thoughts that come in and go the holidays and we get a little bit overloaded or if you're a woman and you hit the mon monthly cycle and you got a little, little loneliness that hits you or you know maybe you're pregnant and or after pregnancy or maybe you're in college and you just overwhelmed the exams and you overwhelmed for a week or two or you got into a relationship and you got cold feet and you got this your mind is just jamming for a few days though those are not the concerns it's the things that stay with you through holidays through the pregnancy through raising your children when your children are gone when you are slow when you are single and when you are married it's the things that stay it's the default things of your mind your mind constantly wandering to this direction it's those things that are deadly it's those things that destroy us I remember a story of when Jesus sat with his disciples and they forgot to bring bread and Jesus is telling them about Pharisees. He says Pharisees they're so bad and stay away from the yeast of Pharisees. He Stay away from uh, from this teaching of Pharisees and he uses the same word as for bread. He has, uses yeast and disciples are looking at one another and they're saying he's talking about us. See you forgot bread. 
no you forgot bread and they're debating because they forgot bread it's interesting the moment they hear the word bread their mind automatically goes to something they haven't done their mind was wired to always focus on their mistakes and negative things and Jesus rebukes them and he says why is your mind constantly driving into your mistakes instead of the miracles I've done he says when you hear the word bread why your mind didn't go into the miracle I've done but your mind went into the fact you forgot bread why is that every situation you hit you always think that you're gonna die from this this won't work out people will leave you people will abandon you why is your mind by default going into the mistakes instead of God's mercy your mistakes instead of God's grace your faults instead of God's goodness and Jesus is correcting the default of their mind so that their thoughts the thoughts that stay is not focused on my sinfulness but on God's righteousness can somebody say amen that's why the Bible says God gives us a helmet of salvation not a hat of condemnation God is not giving you a hat of poor little me helmet of salvation you know what that means God wants you to wear a mindset I'm saved means you're constantly mindful of what's right with you instead of what's wrong with you you're living with the awareness of what God has given me not of what I have lost you were you're living with the consciousness I am righteous not I am sinful you may have a bad day but do you wear a helmet of salvation or a hat of condemnation well if you look at the situation you constantly condemn yourself I'm not good I fell I, I've slipped I've done this I didn't do that good enough that means you're not wearing a helmet God does not want you to have a consciousness of sin he wants you to wear a consciousness of righteousness and salvation but that consciousness is a helmet that means you have to put it on you don't have to create it make it you do have to wear it it's a choice you make to put on every day I am victorious I am righteous I am prosperous I am a happy man I am a fulfilled woman even if you're single or maybe your relationship is not doing so well I am a great mother I am a child of most high God you might not the two pimples came out on, on your forehead I am God's masterpiece fearfully and wonderfully I am made I gained 10 pounds listen my worth is not determined by my weight but by the stripes Jesus received on the cross I know who I am wear a helmet not a hat because the hat can protect you from the cold but not from the demons only the helmet can protect you from the devil can somebody shout hallelujah conscious conscious of your righteousness in Jesus consciousness of what's right with you instead of what's wrong with you that consciousness is the stones that sink and the last point is what you see you will seize and now I'm going to talk about Israel's army what you see you will seize we talked about David his positivity was linked with Holy Spirit Goliath's wasn't we talked about Goliath as the Goliath's head was hit with a stone and it wasn't that he was hit is the stone sunk it talks about the consciousness that we constantly have or the constant pattern of thoughts that really bring victory or defeat in our life and that Jesus asks us to have a helmet of salvation instead of a hat of condemnation and lastly is the army when Goliath first time got up and said whoever will challenge me if I defeat them you know then we become your slave uh, then uh, you guys will become my slaves Israel the Bible says in here is that Israel fled from him and were dreadfully afraid in verse 24 chapter 17 they saw an image of a big guy and they fled for 40 days they were afraid they were running away instead of going and acting David gets up he defeats the Goliath and now the image they no longer see a Goliath they now see a problem solved in front of them and that image is changed from defeat to victory and we see that Israel Israel and Judah arose and shouted now the interesting part when they fled nobody hit them they were not running because somebody was hitting them they were running because the image they saw was negative and they were shying away in fear 
now they're shouting not because they got victory David got a victory they didn't get anything but because the image they saw is different the Bible says they arose and they started to shout and they started to run same thing happens with Philistines when Philistines had a Goliath who was shouting big words they felt confident because they had an image when Goliath fell Philistines ran and they were afraid the images you see will determine what you will run after in your life many of us are hiding in fear not because the situation is bad it's because the situation has become the image in our mind what we see like Ilya like pastor Ilya was saying today what you see is what you will have most of you have heard a story of this runner uh, Roger Benningster and those of you who run you you knew that for a very long time 4,000 or, or 6,000 years I mean people could not break the record of running a mile under four minutes in 1944 somebody came the closest which is running a mile in four minutes and one second and this record was the the greatest record ever known and this record lasted for nine years of running a mile in four minutes and one second. The doctors have proven, there has been a science that was done that said a human body is not capable of running a mile under four minutes. Your body will not even able to function in that. And Roger Benningster in 1954 on May 6th, he breaks the record of running a mile in three minutes 59 seconds now to set it in perspective when they did olympics a long time ago in rome they had bulls running after runners so they can break the record and they still couldn't break the record this guy he breaks the record that was never broken before the interesting part is that just 46 days later landy breaks his record and within one year over 20 people all run a mile under four minutes today a fast high schooler can run a mile under four minutes today running a mile under four minutes is no longer a huge record why because an image of a runner was changed from this is not possible to he did it they did it that's normal and when your normal is changed in your mind your body activates you arise and you shout and you run what is the image in your mind that's why God told Israel in the wilderness when they were dying out of sickness he said Moses I want you to raise a serpent if people will look at the serpent instead of looking at their problem he said they will live the problem is not with the sickness it's with the image people are looking at God says I want them to look at the new image and Jesus comes on the scene you know what Jesus said he says as Moses lifted a serpent so is the son of man that will be lifted that whoever believes it's interesting the word see and believe are used interchangeably whoever believes in him will not die but have life to believe is to see when you see you believe you know 2000 years ago son of David came against the Goliath called Satan sickness and death and he took the stone of his life and he hit the Goliath and the Goliath fell this was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3 that Satan you will hurt Jesus in his heel but he will crush your head why did Jesus defeat the devil not only to defeat the devil but every scared soldier could have a new image in his mind the devil has been defeated everything is possible the devil has been defeated so was cancer the devil was defeated so was arthritis the devil was defeated I can get out of poverty the devil was defeated my family can be restored the devil was defeated my marriage can be restored the devil is defeated I will arise I will shout I will run and I will win why because the Goliath fell by the son of David because somebody shout amen change your image and you will change what you will seize change your image and you will change what you will have look at something different when God came to Abraham he told Abraham 
when you are tired Abraham and you look down because you don't have children look at every piece of sand and it's your son your daughter calling your name when you are excited look up and every star is your descendants Abraham look have new images in your mind because you will seize what you see when he came to Mary and Mary said I cannot have children he says Elizabeth your relative she couldn't have children either angel paints a new image in front of Mary and says stop looking at the fact that you do not know man look at something else even if something else is not your victory someone else's victory let it paint an image it's possible Holy Spirit is able and I believe it because I see it in Jesus name can somebody say amen that's why we have images when we pray many times of Toyota Center packed you may say but that event was a hockey game it doesn't matter the fact that Toyota Center can be filled even for a hockey game that gives me faith it can be filled it can be filled also for the glory of God you have to have an image in your mind it's good to have an image on your iPad iPhone your Android on your computer and on a poster but that image has to be in your mind victory what you see you will seize amen